All right, it's Mark, and it's time to start here. Get rid of the screen, and let's see, where's the... Okay. So... See how this looks. Hmm. Should probably fix this. Let me do this first. All right. So uh, anyway, this is Mark, and um, so what is tonight? Tonight is Wednesday, the twenty second of February, twenty seventeen, and uh, so the time has come to look at our uh, five week challenge entries, and so. Uh, we've only had, I guess, one entry uh, this month or this the past five weeks, and that's from Claymara. Let me see here, and it looks like oh, okay, so <laughs> Ray Maryhausen also entered. Very cool. So we got like a cutout animation. So that was probably submitted here just like looks like 15 minutes ago. So uh, two entries to look at, and uh, I also want to make mention that on the front page of our site um, I made uh, just a few small changes um, if it'll load up here like I said my internet connection is really not the greatest as of late uh, so I'm pretty sure that when I broadcast tonight uh, unfortunately some of the animation might not be very smooth which is not going to be so great so what I'm going to do is I'm going to post uh, the entries on our Facebook page. So if you guys want to get to our Facebook page, um, I put our social media up here instead of what I had before. So we've got YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And uh, before, you know, I never had a, um, the link to our YouTube page wasn't even correct. So uh, I did fix that. <laughs> I guess it's been that way for probably a year or so. You know, it's been that way for a long time. Um, so the site needed some, some updating. And... Where did our countdown time? Oh, you know, that's odd. Um, well, the time is up, so I guess our countdown timer for the five-week challenge disappeared here in the box. So uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, well, anyway, uh, I did add a countdown timer, <laughs> which uh, I just found out it disappears uh, when the time is up. So uh, anyway, um, and this box here in the future, actually, actually uh, after tonight when I uh, load up the next timer um, or update it, this will show and it will have a link to our five week challenges and tell you how much time we have left. So if people are wanting to know, um, that's what's going to be there. And um, other than that, uh, nothing else to say about the site. I did add a few links, so if you guys ever do visit our link section, uh, we've got a ton of links, which, you know, I imagine I probably should go through these links one day just to see if all of them still work um, because I add links, but I don't always check them. Um, but I added, uh, let's see, a studio link as well as uh, a 3D printing link. And Consumer Affairs contacted me and said that they were um, they had a, a review page so if people buy 3d printers and they're unhappy with the printer or happy with it they can post you know whatever story they want they can rate the printers and all this kind of stuff uh, so I got a link there and the guy was pretty persistent who created this page he wrote me like three times um, and uh, so I, I you know I, I gave in and I you know checked out his link and posted it here uh, so you can see like there's for the Luzbot, Lulzbot, uh, the Affinia 3D, um, the MakerBot which I think MakerBot is going under I think that they're not going to last very long uh, also Stratasys, um, 3D Systems, Tinkerine, Ultimaker, and Cubify which no longer exists and the one printer that I own is the Wanhao i3 duplicator which is from China, which maybe that's why he didn't, you know, they don't have like a, a link for, for Wanhao products. Um, but there's so many bizarre um, knockoffs of, you know, actually the Wanhao is a knockoff of a, a Prusa uh, 3D printer. So, but if you guys are into 3D printing, um, this is something that is like an emerging technology and stop motion, and a lot of people are really excited about it, um, you know, which I am definitely, but. Uh, so we got that link, and also we have a studio link 
uh, here as well to um, this company in Nor Norway, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. So anyway, about the challenges, um, Clay Mara and I also talked, and she said that I should probably make like a um, a video to promote the challenges, you know, on my YouTube channel, just to uh, get people interested in it, you know, uh, because it's been kind of slow. We've got two entries this time, I think. Uh, we've got. Um, let's see here. So Clay Mara actually had uh, had made this video, I believe, of her working on her puppet and sculpting it and so if you guys want to um, check out her channel she uh, let me see here she's got a a YouTube channel but also it says live on you now so I think you now is like a uh, like a social media uh, broadcasting type site kind of like live stream if you guys remember we had a, a live stream um, channel for all of our live shows before YouTube uh, offered the ability to do that and so there I guess there's a few possibly a few places that do that and I think maybe she's like you know I'm not really sure the technical aspects behind it but it's kind of cool that um, she uploaded this to her channel of her you know working on her, her her character for the project and so she says here hopefully I'll get the animation done in time this small project is called hamster food and so she's got like these uh, different little storyboards that she posted in here to show her progress. And again, um, you know, if she were here, maybe in the comments, um, she's really good at watching these and, and leaving comments on these videos. But maybe she can explain, you know, how she's making these uh, storyboards. I'm sure she's using a program for it. Um, it's got like a little thing here for audio. Uh, for audio too and action and the ability to just you know do a quick sketch in there which that's really all you need for storyboards you know I, I don't really do much more than that for my own storyboards sometimes even less actually uh, so that's really cool so uh, anyway um, and then let's see when did she post this uh, three days ago uh, she finally had finished her animation and we're going to watch these two and so i'm sure most of you have uh you know know the routine already for our five week um, challenges we're going to watch it and let me open it in a new window first uh we'll watch both of these let me pause that one i'm going to also open this one here as well and pause hopefully pause pause please and pause that one okay so we're gonna watch these twice uh, and then the second time around I'm gonna take a tally everybody gets to vote for their favorite and I'm gonna write it down I'm gonna get a pen first and a piece of paper actually a post-it note <laughs> so uh, and by the way her Clay Mara's channel is called C flap flap so if you guys want to check out her channel, you can see it down here. So we've got Claymora. Hey, Randy. And Mystery Pictures and Crodista. So let's see. So we've got uh, Claymora and then also Ray Maryhausen. And uh, and so Ray just got got uh, her. Oh, it's Mur. Okay, I thought I knew who you were. <laughs> um, so uh, Mur says, uh, "Hey everybody, here's the monthly challenge entry for hamsters. Thanks for watching." And it's over three minutes. Wow, that's a long one. Okay, no wonder it took so long to get that one done. Well, anyways, uh, let's watch this one from Clay Mara now. Can I? Yeah, let me get rid of the chat for now, okay? I will bring it back, I promise. And uh, after we watch this, we will discuss it. And hopefully, it's not too jittery because of my internet connection. Make your hamster happy by Hamster Food, the best food for any hamster. Hey 
guys, thank you so much for watching. This video was inspired by our hamster Mondi and I really want to do commercial kind of things so this was kind of like an experiment. I want to dedicate this animation to my fans and my friends who have been supportive of my animations for a very long time. Also, I finally got back into stop motion animation. So if you want to see more of stop motion animation from me, please subscribe to this channel. This animation is for animateclay.com. So uh, yeah, bye. All right, so that's uh, Clay Mara. And so um, the, Janet is asking, what is the topic? And it's just hamster uh, or hamster. There's no P in hamster, which I always thought there was until I had to, <laughs> until I had to uh, write the word hamster as part of the monthly challenges. And, you know, spell check is like, no, nope, that's not correct. That's not how you spell it. All right, so uh, this one here is a bit long, three minutes. And uh, now this is from Murr, and I hope this will play. Let's see what happens here. Okay, here it goes. Cool. So that was Hamster TV. <laughs> I'm not really sure I want to watch that TV channel because that uh, didn't have a very nice ending. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I guess uh, I guess the band-aid didn't work either for that one character. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to watch these both one more time.
uh, or do we need? Yeah, I guess we should because they're pretty short, right? One minute long and three minutes. So we'll watch them one more time. And then we're going to take votes um, as to who you guys like the most. Um, so if you're just getting here, uh, make sure to watch closely. And we will uh, find a winner. And we've also got something else to say about uh, prizes, possible future prizes for our next uh, five-week challenge. So anyway, I can't forget. Here we go. Make your hamster happy. Buy hamster food. The best food for any hamster. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. This video was inspired by our hamster, Mondi. And I okay, really so I am gonna go to the next one. And so uh, Ashley, why don't we watch this beginning part? Of the actual animation once uh, once more here because it's really short here make your hamster happy buy hamster food the best food for any hamster hey guys thank you so much for watching this video was inspired by Okay, so pretty cool little characters. I kind of like that gray, uh, you know, simple design um, for this character here. Kind of like a uh, cross between a, an alien and a stick figure and a human. Kind of, kind of neat there. And then this one, of course, is from Mur, aka uh, Ray Mary Her. <laughs> How do I say it? Uh, Ray Mary Housen. That's right. Okay, let's watch.
<laughs> I don't think he could take that uh, the visuals there of all all that uh, the hamsters being eaten and everything. Oh, is our chat working here? There we go. Hmm, there's a delay for some reason when I click that. All right. But well, anyways, so we're going to take uh, we got two votes for Claymara and we got 10 people here. So uh, if you guys would like to please vote for your favorites. Um Obviously, you know, everybody put a lot of time into these and uh, I want to you know, at least say uh, thank you both for, for entering. Um, I think uh, a three minute film for a challenge is, is a real lot of work. So um, let's see here now. Oh, OK. So uh, Clay Mara got 44 views on her video and uh, and Murr only has four, but uh, if you want to check out Mary Allen's uh, channel, which I'm gonna subscribe also. Um, I guess to just look for Mar Mary Allen as the uh, as the channel name. Let's see here. Not sure uh, why I didn't subscribe earlier, and it's weird that I subscribed. Okay, it does say I'm subscribed. All right. Yeah, sometimes YouTube is weird because I, I subscribed and then the subscription count should have been four because she had uh, three s subscriptions and I should have been number four. So I don't understand that. Some sort of delay. So Mystery Pictures says, uh, Hamster TV got my vote. I like the animation and the creepy idea. All right. So one, four, Ray Maryhausen. <laughs> and uh, so Randy says, Ray's piece took a lot of work. I think it's the longest entry I've ever seen. It's quite colorful and unique too. Yeah, I think that probably is close to one of the longest ones for sure. Oh, hey, Mer. <laughs> Mer, Mary, mm, Harry Malson, what is it again? <laughs> Mary Housen, Mary Housen. I get it. All right, so my brain's a little slow tonight. <laughs> so uh, Randy says, but I'm gonna have to vote for Claymore also. I like that she is uh, branching out into advertising. Ads are great. A brand new project to do. Shoot a quick 30 seconds and move on to the next thing. Okay, so uh, that's three for Claymore. Yeah, you're welcome. Glad to subscribe. Thanks for entering. That's some awesome animation. I think it's really actually pretty darn, I mean, astounding. <laughs> I mean, three minutes and the lighting is really cool and the transitions you did and the, the little static animations for the TV and the noise, the, the sound effects and everything. All of us really great. So uh, Hoserlu says, I've got to go with Hamster TV. Very creative and very out there. All right. So we got two for Murr and three for Claim Mara. So we need some more votes. Please vote. Get out the vote. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I don't do this here. What am I doing there? And yeah, my internet is so so slow. Come on, internet. Let's see here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, let's see. CB says um, both very cool, but gotta go with Murr for originality. All right. And very cool. So we got a tie. We got uh, six votes. We got three for Clay Mara and one from from Mary Allen. 
Anybody else? Please make sure to vote. So both really good, and I kind of like uh, I kind of like this funky looking hamster that Claymore made. <laughs> kind of goofy. I like goofy characters. I don't think uh, claymation should be you know too serious. Although uh, some of my first some of my first films were gory and I don't want to say really serious, but but I can't really uh, I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't say that I didn't make films like that. <laughs> so um, all right, so we need somebody to either break the tie or maybe a couple of people to vote, if possible. If not, um, I may have to be the tiebreaker. I don't like to be the tiebreaker, so you guys need to vote. Please, somebody, anybody. All right, well, so let's see here. Let me just refresh the page, make sure nobody else posted like the very last second. <laughs> course we'd have to no yep. okay just making sure just checking all right well anybody else uh, did I did I miss anyone let's see here so let me go through here and make sure I didn't miss any votes so Janet Ron Mystery, Randy, Hoserlu, and CB. Okay. So Pranster, are you still here? Pranster was really talkative before. I don't know where he went. Maybe he went to the bathroom. <laughs> and let's see here. Beard, did you vote? All right. Well, I am going to have to break the tie, guys. Um, that's not going to be very easy, but I think uh, just for the sheer number of shots and the um, thought that went into Murr's video, I mean, it's really well done. I think just the, the lighting and the sound effects and the transitions here, you know, on channel transitions and uh, this character, the way that he, you know, appears to be alive with all the, the eye blinks and and just the detail. There's so much detail in this, and so many little things like the little uh, potted plant up there, um, just the textures on the the backgrounds. Uh, you know, it's technically, it's technically a a much nicer film, I think. Uh, or a short film and it's crazy <laughs> it's <laughs> it's really unique like this person's like okay you got this uh, giant problem blood everywhere and here's a band-aid I mean <laughs> it's just uh, really quirky so um, I really like that and I think also uh, you know Clay Mara's little short film here uh, although it's really short I think that it's pretty neat that what she's doing with the background here, just to have it purposely, you know, simple is also pretty cool. Uh, it's a very simple concept, but you know, obviously, uh, it was it was made um, to completion, and I know that sometimes that alone is uh, is an accomplishment. And it's pretty funny. It's kind of a funny funny hamster <laughs> yeah I really like Claymore's work it's really I hate having to having to break ties and nope can't vote twice Hoserlu but thanks <laughs> all right so uh so this last five week challenge is going to go to 
Mary Allen or uh, Ray Mary Housen slash Mer slash whatever it will be tomorrow. And uh, I will be posting. Um, whoops, why did I close that one there? See, I keep clicking on stuff that I'm not, not wanting to click on. Um, so I'm going to post those both in our Facebook page. So I don't know how that played for you guys. Did it? Did it play smooth for you, or was it kind of jittery? You know, not because it stopped motion, but was it dropping a lot of frames? Or hopefully, it's not too bad. But uh, if it was, either way, it doesn't matter. I'm still gonna post it in our uh, Facebook fan page. And um, also, if you guys have any advice on how we could get the word out maybe about our challenges. Um, I know that it's still, you know, a lot of people are in school. Um, people are really busy lately, as am I, you know, I'm, I'm super busy with stuff right now. But um, if you guys have any advice, anything you want me want me to do with the page um, in terms of, you know, Clay Mara said, you know, maybe make a, a video just to advertise the challenges. Um, also, uh, as far as prizes go, it's possible that Sony Vegas, they uh, they have of course their um, their editing program, which I use all the time. Uh, they recently contacted me and said that they were looking for a partnership and that uh, they would possibly be able to give out a few um, license keys to help them. Uh, they've got what is it? Uh, I forget what version it is now, but it's uh, like a Sony Sony Vegas something or other. And that would be, I think, a cool prize. I think, you know, most of the people that uh, watch our live show, and of course, you know, obviously everybody here, if you do your five week challenges, you're gonna need to edit your videos. And uh, so I'm gonna see if I can get them to partner with me. And obviously uh, they contacted me, so they're interested. But I think, you know, getting the word out about their product just for the sake of giving you guys a prize um, you know, a free prize would be really cool. So I'm going to work with them and, and see if, you know, I'm gonna, I got to wait for them to write back. Uh, they're actually in Germany, so the time zone is a bit uh, different. I don't think it's like maybe, what, 10-hour difference or something like that. So um, so we'll see what happens there and um, play it by ear. But if something does come up where we have a prize from them, if they actually want to sponsor the prizes, for maybe the next uh, two or three uh, challenges or something like that I will definitely let everybody know and I will update our five week challenges page as well <clears throat> so right now uh, you know we've got our, our rules here and everything and you know where you can get some software and then uh, the prize part here is uh, you know normally what I have is you can get uh, any of the downloads from our store, which also are on um, YouTube, and uh, also our book, Secrets of, Secrets of Clan Animation Revealed. So actually, um, Mary, I don't know if you want either any of those. I don't know if you bought all of those because uh, like a lot of people have bought most of my stuff already um, that visit here. So if you haven't, um, you can pick whatever you want for free. So just. Uh, if you want to let me know, maybe um, you know, sometime later on, send me a, a message on the site or an email. Uh, we can do that. All right, now moving forward. Uh, so I did post this already, of course, on our Facebook fan page, and or maybe it was the news page. Well, I can't remember now. I think it was the Facebook page. Um, so. People over at um, Pixar, let me see here. What they've done is they've offered to um, teach how they write stories for their films and where they get ideas from. And uh, they've sort of created this little community. And they've also got these activities. So it's kind of like a, a little teaching course from Pixar. And so what they've got is uh, you watch a video and then you do an activity and uh, and you know you, you tell a story and it's kind of cool because let me see if I can just um, load it up here. Hey Pete. Oh hey Val. How's it going? You know what I'm I'm having a really bad day. What happened? 
See, what Val's saying when she says, what happened is, tell me a story. And that's actually what this season of Pixar in a Box is all about. To make a movie here at Pixar takes years, but it all starts with a story. Humans have been telling stories since we could speak, probably even before. We tell stories around the campfire. We write plays, we write novels, short stories, we make movies, we take photographs, tweet to each other, the list goes on. The power of story is that it has an ability to connect with people on an emotional level. One of the things you hear all the time, this advice, is write what you know. Now, as a kid, I was like, I don't want to write about suburban Minnesota. That's boring. I want to write about explosions and monsters and car chases. Well, what that actually means is, yeah, go ahead and write about monsters and explosions and car chases, but put something into it that talks about your own life, how you feel. Do you feel scared? Do you feel alone? Something from your own life will make that story come alive and not just be a boring car chase. When I started directing Monsters Incorporated, the way I would pitch it is, it's about a monster who scares kids for a living. That's his job. He clocks in, he clocks out, he eats donuts, and talks about union dues. And we thought that was a pretty funny idea. And sure enough, when I would tell it to people, they would smile. But when we told the story as a film, people started getting bored and restless. And they're like, I don't understand what this movie is about. Well, what I finally figured out was that it's actually not about a monster who scares kids. It's about a man becoming a father. And that was what was happening to me. So why write about what you know? Well, it's because probably what happened to you made you feel some particular way. And what you're trying to do really when you tell a story is to get the audience to have that same feeling. One of the big revelations for me uh, telling stories is how much work they are, really. I always thought you'd just tell the story once and it would be perfect, and geniuses like Walt Disney or Miyazaki, this brilliance comes out of their head once and there it is. Well, the truth is, our stories don't always come out exactly perfectly the first time, or the second time, or the third time, or the fourth time, up to the 30th time. And so you keep going again and again and again, and only after retelling the story many, many times does it really sparkle. This season of Pixar in a Box is about how we at Pixar tell our stories in hopes that it will inspire you to tell yours. But seriously, what happened? Oh, oh, so the first thing, I get to my desk, right? It's 8 o'clock in the morning. So that's just the uh, the intro. And so you go through this series of, of links on the left hand side here until you, you know, understand the whole process of storytelling. And so I think that's, you know, that's such a, you know, if you think about Leica or you think about Ardman or, or Pixar or any of the Disney, you know, companies and uh, through the past where, you know, they've they've drawn everything on, you know, paper and all the way back to the very beginning of time, most people, when they think of animation, they think mostly of the technical aspects. But, you know, the story is the key to a successful uh, film. Um, in fact, your characters can look like complete garbage and you can have uh, somewhat poor animation and, and still be able to have a successful film from the standpoint of the viewer that is watching and they feel, you know, connected to a character and whatnot. So, um, so this is Pixar in a Box from ConAcademy.org. And so I think probably if you Google Pixar in a Box, you can find this. Um, and then there's also uh, another tutorial, which is character, which I haven't clicked on. Let me click that. So I guess that um, yeah, okay, so this isn't there yet, but it's all, I guess, going to be for free. And that's really cool. I mean, if you want to learn how Pixar is successful, you know, that is uh, that is one place I would definitely check out. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, let me make sure this doesn't autoplay. Okay. Um, so yeah, pretty neat, I think. And moving forward. Uh, so Alba Garcia, who we've had on our show, um, I talked to her tonight on Facebook briefly. And um, so she told me about this studio in Norway, and I'd never heard of it before. It's 
Cuvistin Animation, and they do a mixture of cutout, drawn, puppet, stop motion, and CG work. And so let me see, just like, for example, here's their drawn stuff. Looks kind of like Adventure Time, perhaps, in style here. Uh, they've got motion graphics that they do as well. Uh, I don't really understand what that entails exactly. Uh, they've got puppet animation, which they have a mixture of their, I think, marionettes here and stop motion puppets. But if we click stop motion, they've got uh, two feature films that they've worked on. And so I believe... Yeah, let's uh, let's watch this one here. I think, I think I might have posted this at one point on Facebook, but let's see. Good morning, Flotlipa. No sleeper. Welcome to Ostlöp. Ja, här följer stämningen till att ta på, och där kommer lagen från Flida. Ofta. Ja, ja, så har de en desperados. Men med hans solen, och han är lika god. Turen går enkelt och grejt från Slidre till Flåklippa. Efter start går färden över Snubbleskauen. Så ska det över Helsingsjuven. Det väntar stora varor och många utfordringar under mig. Det är bara lov att beväga sig mot mål så länge solen är uppe. Det är framdeles i solen. Och första man till att placera osten mitt i Flåklippa centrum. Snart! Har vunnit! So, uh, obviously a very, uh, <laughs> a really amazing studio here to be able to make such a, you know, awesome puppets. So I'm pretty sure there was like a behind the scenes of all this somewhere. And I, I don't know if it was like, a, if, if the studio is, you know, got a separate Facebook page where I, I've seen this, but, um, it's kind of hard to remember, but, uh, and then they've got this one as well. Let's click on this. And by the way, they're actually hiring. Um, and are we going to load? Yep. Here we go. Okay. Mann og konekaker. Det er utmerket. Gå i gang. Det er i gang. Jeg går utmerket. Ingen sang må ha peppekaker når man bare har en god peppekakebakesang. Looks like we've locked up there. Jeg så reven bort i skogen. Jeg tror han er på vei bort hit. So let's kind of go back here and I'm going to pause. Let's kind of look at these puppets a bit. So yeah, I mean the, the detail is, is really amazing and I like the way that they've, they've, uh, it's almost like they sculpted the walls or, you know, I don't know if they're using balsa wood, but whatever the, the technique is, it's great. It's really beautiful and the dry brushing on everything, um, the sets, the textures. I think the lighting is not really super great, but that's the only thing really. I think everything else, wow, it's pretty fantastic. <laughs> this is a Qvistin animation and it's Q-V-I-S-T-E-N and then animation dot n o is their web web address so I, I posted a link to them in our studio links on our website 
animateclay.com. Um, so it's there. So it's really pretty nice. I mean, their their animation is great. And uh, well, it almost looks like uh, like they've used the photograph for the background. I can tell he's sort of green. Like there's some sort of chroma keying going on here. Um, I can tell something's odd about this, you know. But uh, I don't know if you guys can can tell that in in the live stream, but uh, still, Let's go great. You. Beautiful looking, you know, eyes they made there, really small and detailed and shiny and wow, that's cool. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Mystery is saying nice puppets. I, yeah, it's really great. And their set work is great too, like from the, the previous one that we watched. But uh, anyway, um, so they've got 560 projects. That, I don't know if that means in the works you know like ideas or they've created 560 projects uh, they've got 74 employees and also uh according to alba they're looking for ideas for a feature film and they're hiring for a couple of i think stop motion animators as well as some let me click here So looking for a rigger, a senior production designer, art director, lighting artist for CGI, uh, compositing artist, again, CG, and then uh, stop motion animators must have stop motion material with puppets and sh uh, showreel. And startup is ASAP in 2017, uh, one to 12 months. So a potential one year of work. And uh, that is a pretty good amount of time there. Um, so and then they want like a matte artist as well for stop motion. So if you want to paint backgrounds, I guess. And that doesn't that probably would not be a 12 month long job, but still, uh, that would be a fun place to work, I think. Really fun place. So again, uh, this is um, let me oh, why is it in a this is a Google Docs page. That's odd. All right. So, uh, click contact. So, uh, this is it. Uh, all their contact information. And again, like I say, probably the easiest way to find them yourself and to find this form is just to go to Q Vistin, V I S T E N animation dot N O. All right. So I think, uh, Alba was telling me something about, um, about trying to get a job there and also pitching her project so somebody who was it uh, mentioned Justin Rash who is making some animation and I checked it out here on Facebook and this is it so I don't know if Justin is making a new like feature or short film or 30 minute film or what um, I need to still learn about it, but I saw this animation and I can tell it's definitely his sort of style. And it says first facial test, just experimenting with how I plan the puppet speaking. So I think this is his personal project. Awesome. Um, so it's called Vike Fire Talk. Let's make it big and remove the chat for a moment and play it. First. There was a howl. I grabbed my weapon. I turned round. And then I saw the beast. Cool. Let me play that again if I can. Let's make it big again too. First, there was a howl. I grabbed my whip. First. All right. 
Come on, Vimeo. You need to load properly here. Okay, let's try again. First, there was a howl. I grabbed my weapon. I turned around. And then I saw the beast. All right, so um, I can't really say like how he's how he made this. Uh, other, I mean, the mouth seems to be first. There was a. I don't know if it's because he's added motion blur, but the lips seem almost like they were digitally digitally put on there. Could also be because Vimeo is not exactly uh, loading up in HD for me and properly. It's not super crisp. Turn. Yeah, I think it's because of the motion blur making his lips look like they're not Drop. stop motion. Owned. But uh, from what I know about Justin is he likes to do a lot of stuff in foam latex. So I'm pretty sure that this is all foam latex. Um, one of the bad parts about foam latex is the way that it wrinkles everywhere. Um, now, I mean, if you don't mind that, of course, it's okay. Uh, but if you're someone like Leica, of course, they'd probably go with, you know, some really super expensive silicone or or something but you can tell you know it's a, a a telltale sign and the eyes look like they're probably some sort of uh they turned around and like glass beads perhaps I saw. and he's got some sort of like a, a jaw hinge thing here and so the problem looks like he had to try to solve is getting different mouth shapes with a beard that can't really be replaced without looking like it's uh you know popping everywhere so i guess what he's trying to has to do is like make the clay teeth behind there and then maybe pop the beard off and then stick on some lips to make the different uh, phonemes, you know, the mouth shapes. So I think that's what he's doing here. Let's see. And, oh, so his mouth opens. So he's probably got like a piece of wire in there. And then here, he's got to cover that mouth up to get the ooh shape. So he's got like some fuzzy material that he's sticking on there, I guess. And the motion blur part almost looks uh, like he he did that part without using a blur program. Like he's smearing it in, um, let's see here, see... see that blur there I think because most most blur programs do that between two different frames and it appears to be one static frame that's blurred as the second frame so I think he's using like Photoshop or something like that to do that I could be wrong it'd be nice to talk to him and ask him all these questions <laughs> but yeah it looks really great let's watch it one more time here if uh, if Vimeo wants to cooperate. First, there was a howl. I grabbed my weapon. I turned round, and then I saw the beast. Pretty awesome. And so Justin, of course, if you guys already know or don't know, uh, he worked for Leica on Kubo and the Two Strings, and uh, and also um, the the one they did before that. Uh, which one was that called? Uh, Oh gosh, my brain's not working. Um, oh, what is this? Vike making? Hmm. Let's watch this. Let's watch. Cool. Very awesome. So uh, he did. Uh, let me see. Let's click on this one here. How much time we have? We have four minutes left. Oh man, this hour went quick. Let's see which one loads up. <laughs> Ah. ah, a very short clip there. 
So uh, J Riggedy is what, how he goes uh, goes by his handle on Vimeo. So if you guys want to check out some of his work, now uh, yeah, so he's only got two videos for his newest one. So I'm pretty sure he's gearing up to make something really cool as always. <laughs> he's always working on something cool. Um, so if you guys want, you you know, I'm not sure if I don't have an actual Vimeo account. Uh, so I can't follow him, but what I do is I check in on his his Facebook page because I'm friends. And uh, anyways, I guess uh, we should probably wrap this show up here. Uh, I do want to thank everybody who uh, who entered in our five week challenge, of course, again. And uh, I will be uploading um, your videos to our Facebook page, like I said. And Mary, if you want, um, like I said before. Uh, you get a prize for for winning, which uh, is in our store. So we've got a link on our page if you guys uh, ever want to look. It's uh, so we've got all these video uh, tutorials to choose from, minus uh, Kathy Zhang's video. And actually, you know, I, I talked to Kathy Zhang recently, <clears throat> and we're out of her DVDs and. So I'm going to be actually producing those her DVDs for her uh, to sell on the site. So if you guys are wanting a DVD, her uh, foam latex puppet making, sorry to say we're out of those, and I hope to have more as soon as she sends some, uh, at least two, one for sale and one for um, for copying in the future. But we've got some of our other our, you know videos here as well, like you know making replacement mouths and clay. And uh, how to smooth clay, I think, is in here, as well as um, sculpting puppets, making sets, and some of my older stuff. You know, which um, it's it's still pretty cool, I guess. Uh, if you're new to stop motion, it's uh, some of the first videos that you could get, you know, out there uh, before YouTube came along, and there were like ten bazillion tutorials. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Um, thanks again, everybody, and I guess uh, I will see you all next week. Next week, I'm going to be probably getting back to Krita and making another character for our film. I'm also in the process of making a special kind of table to put next to my desk, which I'm going to use for broadcasting um, when I make the two uh, two 2.5D clay characters. So I'm going to broadcast the creation of all those. Uh, but I don't have a space to do that right now. And so when I make this table, it will be specifically for that. So it should be kind of fun. And uh, all right, so see you guys all next week.